With that, this court has listened to extensive evidence in this case. I heard four days of testimony from the Miller hearing. I presided over numerous placement hearings. I conducted the initial placement hearing in this case, and so the court is fully aware of the defendant's upbringing. I'm fully aware of the circumstances that brought him before the court. First, to the victims of the deceased, the court sends out its sincerest condolences to their family. To the injured victims and to those victims as it relates to count one, terrorism causing death, thank you for your courage and strength in speaking today, as well as sending written correspondence. As counsel has pointed out, the court has read everything that you've submitted. I've read the defendant's sentencing memorandum. I've read the people's response there too. I've read all of the exhibits that were attached, and I've read every single victim impact statement over the course of three days. It probably took me closer to 36 hours to read all of this, and so I've read everything and have gone back through the complete file. The, le the letters truly gave the court a sliver of insight into the unique and amazing personalities of Justin, Hannah, Tate, and Madison. The court cannot begin to imagine the fear that the parents of those students at Oxford High School had on November 30th, 2021. I cannot even begin to fathom. To have to wait and admire to see if your loved one would return is heart-wrenching. And that's true terror. And not to have your loved one show up at Meyer, the court could not imagine the pain. I know that whatever sentence the court imposes will not bring your loved one back or cure the mental anguish or lifelong physical scars that some of you have. But I hope that this sentence does allow you to close one chapter in your life. I also want to thank law enforcement that responded that day because I know this has not been easy on them as well. As previously stated, the court has read defendant's sentencing memorandum and the people's response. Again, defense argues that defendant should receive a term of years because of defense alleged mental illness. Defendants cite People v. Bennett, 335 Mish at 409, a 2002, excuse me, 2021 case. The court notes that it is not saying because the defendant may be mentally ill that that automatically means he's irreparably corrupt. What the court notes is that he has an obsession with violence, that this act involved extensive planning, extensive research, and he executed on every last one of the things that he planned. As the court stated in his written opinion and order regarding the Miller hearing, defendant's alleged mental illness did not interfere with his ability to extensively plan for months his actions, nor did it interfere with his ability to execute those plans. This started with him asking for a better gun to conduct the school shooting. He had initially a 22 caliber weapon that he wrote would not do enough damage. And so weeks and weeks prior to this offense, he started to formulate this plan and knew and asked for the weapon that he could cause the most harm with. As counsel is aware, the goals of sentencing do not only involve rehabilitation, but also involve deterrence and punishment. Deterrence is two parts. It's private deterrence for the defendant in hopes that they would never commit an act like this again. But then there's also public deterrence, where the public sees the punishment that the individual has received in hopes that the public will never do anything like this in the future. The court has read the report from Guide Post Solutions. It was very lengthy. Respectfully, the court does not find this report to be mitigating in this case. The report simply points the finger at Oxford Public Schools. While the court agrees that more possibly could have been done, that issue is not properly before this court. We are here for sentencing based upon the defendant's actions, not the alleged shortcomings of others. As the defendant pointed out himself, he took responsibility. And he himself is not asking this court for a term of years. The court cannot underscore defendant's extensive planning and execution in this case enough. 
He practiced shooting at a gun range. He practiced racking and unracking the gun. And on November 30th, 2021, he could have chosen not to conduct the school shooting. When his parents were called to the school on that morning for his drawings, he could have said something then. He had a gun in his backpack at that time. When the school counselor advised the parents to please get him help within the next 48 hours, he could have stopped then and simply accepted the help that was going to be offered for him. Because according to the reports, his mother said that he, she'd get him the help. He could have changed his mind. Unfortunately, after shooting the first person, Phoebe Arthur, he could have changed his mind at that point. But he didn't. He continued to walk through the school, picking and choosing who was going to die. As the defendant said in his own words, this is nobody fault but his own. He stated this afternoon that with help, that probably would not have stopped him. That is absolutely concerning to this court. The court apologizes to the victim for the bluntness, but defendant shot and killed Justin Schilling at point blank range after having him get down on his knees in front of another student. He shot Hannah, who was already shot once before. He walked up to her to finish the job by shooting her again. That is an execution. That is torture. He shot most people multiple times. And as he wrote, he did this for notoriety. And he wanted to go down in history as the biggest school shooter in Michigan history. The court cannot ignore the deep trauma defendant caused to the state of Michigan, but in particular, the Oxford community. The court simply cannot ignore that. The court notes that teachers and students returned to Oxford High School after this tragic event. The court cannot even fathom or imagine walking through the halls of that school knowing that your fellow student, your friend, your classmate was killed in a restroom or in the hallway. Most, if not all of the letters that I read advise the court that there are a significant number of people in Oxford that now have PTSD, that now have survivor's guilt and deep depression that arose from this incident. Defendant's actions clearly created a new normal for all of the individuals involved and all of those indirectly impacted as well. Unfortunately, this is what the defendant wanted as he wrote in his journal. He wanted to see the impact of his crime, which is why he did not take his own life. Again, this goes back to the defendant's extensive planning he chose not to die on that day because he wanted the notoriety. The terror that he caused in the state of Michigan and in Oxford is a true act of terrorism. Respectfully, defendant is the rare juvenile before this court. The court having read the PSI and being fully familiar, but before I get that, I will also note that counsel brought up an issue of making bombs for Hitler. The court, that does not change the court's opinion about the defendant's obsession with violence. I thank Ms. Hopp for bringing that to my attention, but it still does not change the court's opinion about him being obsessed with violence because his obsession was also outlined in the websites that he visited. His obsession was also outlined in his extensive drawings of violence. And his obsession continued, as I noted in the court's opinion and order, even while he was in the Oakland County Jail. With that, the court having read the PSI and being fully familiar with the defendant and the underlying facts of this case, believes that it is in the best interest of justice as well as proportionate to the needs of this case to sentence defendant as follows. As it relates to docket 2022-279-506-FC, count one, terrorism causing death. Census of the court is that defendant shall serve life without the possibility of parole, credit for eight days served. Counts two through five, homicide, first degree, premeditated murder, juvenile defendant. Census of the court is that defendant shall serve 
the rest of his life without the possibility of parole with the Michigan Department of Corrections, credit for eight days served. On counts six through 12, assault with intent to murder, on each of the counts, defendant is sentenced to 18 years and nine months to 80 years with the Michigan Department of Corrections, credit for eight days served. On counts 13 through 24, those being felony firearm, defendant is sentenced to two years with the Michigan Department of Corrections on each of those counts with credit for 730 days served. Counts 1 through 12 are concurrent to each other and counts 13 through 24 are concurrent to each other. Count 1 is consecutive to count 13, count 2 is consecutive to count 14, count 3 is consecutive to count 15, count 4 is consecutive to count 16, count 5 is consecutive to count 17, count 6 is consecutive to count 18, count 7 is consecutive to count 19, count 8 is consecutive to count 20, count 9 is consecutive to count 21, count 10 is consecutive to count 22. Count 11 is consecutive to 23 and count 12 is consecutive to count 24. All of those consecutive counts are by reason of the felony firearm statute. Is there a challenge to restitution here? There is not, Your Honor. Thank you. Restitution will be set in the amount of $20,781. State costs will be set in the amount of $1,632. You are not to have any contact with Oxford High School or enter any, excuse me, enter Oxford High School. You are not to have any contact whatsoever with the families of Madison Baldwin, Tate Meyer, Hannah St. Juliana, and Justin Schilling. Also, you are not to have any contact with the following victims or their families, that being Phoebe Arthur, John Osito, Molly Darnell, Riley France, Elijah Mueller, Kylie Osage, Aiden Watson and Keegan Gregory. And I will note that restitution is payable to the Crime Victims' Right Compensation Program. With that, Michigan Department of Corrections, did I miss anything? Your Honor, may I ask the court to order 130 crime victims fee, $60 DNA cost, and DNA testing? Thank you. DNA cost is $60, crime victims' right fee at $130. Did I miss anything else? DNA testing, Your Honor. DNA testing is hereby ordered. Thank you. With that, Ms. Crumbly, you are entitled to file an application for leave to appeal. If you are financially unable to retain a lawyer, the court will appoint a lawyer to represent you on appeal. The request for a lawyer must be filed within 42 days after sentencing. Your attorney is going to be handing you an appellate rights form, sir. Do you acknowledge receipt of the appellate rights form? Your Honor, I have um, tendered that to my client. He has signed it, and I will tender it to the court. Thank you very much. With that, counsel, anything else for the record? Not from people. Thank you. Nothing from the bench. Thank you very much, Ron. Thank you very much. With that, deputies, you may take Mr. Crumbly to those in the gallery. Please be seated until he is exited.